Hi everyone, George here from Data Academy. Today we're going to talk about how to handle imbalanced data sets. So what is the problem of uh, an imbalanced data set? It turns out that uh, with an imbalanced data set because there are hugely imbalanced instances of uh, different classes, it is very challenging for your machine learning model to, to learn really well to have a good performance. So how can we address this? Well, we can use a library that's called imbalanced to learn to address this. The idea is maybe we can use imbalanced to learn to redistribute the classes so that uh, they are more balanced. So instead of maybe 90% of uh, class A and 10% of class B, maybe we can have uh, you know, close to 50-50% split between the two classes. If that's the case, your machine learning model is going to have almost equal information from both classes. And as a result, hopefully it's going to have a better performance. So let's take a look how to use imbalance learn to, uh, to build a model and to improve the performance. So as always, we need all these libraries. And uh, if you haven't installed imbalance learn, you need to ins uh, install it. And um, we're going to use the same data set as we used before, which is the ionosphere data set. So we are going to read in the data like this, and then we're going to split the features and the labels like so. And now if we check the, uh, uh, the labels distribution, we can see in the labels, we have this uh, class B and the class G, and they are imbalanced because uh, they have different numbers. So then the first thing we're going to do here is that we're going to, we're going to uh, split the data into a training data set and a test data set. Okay, so once we do that, if we check again um, in, the, uh, in the training set, we can see still the same thing, right? It's imbalanced. So now if we don't do anything and uh, we just want to train a model and see how the model performs, then we can use, for example, random forest classifier as we did before. And if we train the model using the training set, and then we're going to test it using the test set, then we're going to get this accuracy. Uh, not too bad, right? But uh, next, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to apply imbalance to learn and see what's going to happen. So this is the specific um, random sampler we're going to use. So what it does is uh, this is uh, one of the oversamplers. So we are going to oversample the minority class. So because there is less of you, I'm going to create more instances like you so that uh, you know, you're not going to be a minority class anymore. So this is the way to use it. Okay, so because we imported this earlier, we're just going to say fit resample and we're going to do this on the training set. And now we have the resample data. And if you check again, you can see, although they are not exactly the same in terms of the count, uh, they're quite close. So that's the uh, whole point of using imbalance to learn. We want to make things uh, more balanced. Now we have this resampled data. We can use the data to do the training and the testing again. If we do that, we are going to get this result. If you compare this with the earlier result here, um, when we did nothing, this is uh, definitely better than that, right? So this showcases the, uh, the power of uh, imbalanced learn. So how do we do uh, cross-validation? It turns out we do need to, uh, to make a pipeline so that we can make sure there's no data leakage, okay? So basically, we are going to use the uh, uh, oversampling or whatever sampling technique we're going to use. We're going to use that only on the, um, on the training set and then we're not going to do anything with the test set. This simulates the, uh, the real world uh, situation. Okay, and uh, by doing that, we can avoid any data leakage. So we're going to use the make pipeline function. This is actually from imbalance to learn, not from sklearn. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, make pipeline from imbalance to learn. And um, if we do that, um, we're going to um, have two steps. The first step being uh, uh, the oversampler. 
and uh, the second step being our um, algorithm here. Okay, so now we can do the cross validation as usual. If we do that, we're going to get this result. So that's the uh, tenfold uh, cross validated uh, result for the uh, for the uh, over sampled model. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.